Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. I want to welcome you to the Sunday morning encounter. I want to say thank you, Father, for giving us the opportunity to come before you. As custom of our community, for those of you all who are here, I want you to just begin to give God thanks for allowing you to make it through this week. For those of you all who are here and have a mandate on your life to make sure that you are standing in the gap for others, I need you to put this into the screen. I refuse to let this happen. I refuse to let this happen. If you have a mandate, if God has given you this Holy Ghost bounce back boon, you see, if he's given you a fight that you didn't even know existed in your life, I want you to put this into the screen. I refuse to let this happen. Father, we thank you right now for the opportunity to come before you. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. Father, we praise your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise on today. None of us and all of you. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for giving us strength for this end time warfare. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for giving us a fight to be able to fight the good fight of faith. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for giving us a voice to be able to speak. Father, we thank you right now for giving us the activities of our limbs. Father, we thank you for the small things. Father, we thank you right now for the ability to gather as a global family. Father, we thank you right now for giving us the mind, for giving us the insight, for showing us what is getting ready to manifest and what's getting ready to happen. Father, we thank you for never leaving us in the dark. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for establishing us. We thank you for strengthening us. I refuse to let this happen. I refuse to let this happen. If you're joining us this morning for the first time, I want to invite you to type in an 88. <laughs> for the past 24 hours, I've been before the Lord asking him, God, what do you want me to share with your people? And he gave me a word to release to those of you all who in this season, you are seeing more than you've ever seen before. There's more, there's more internal warfare that's happening around you that has ever happened before. For some of you all, you've been asking the question, where in the world did this come from? <laughs> but I'm getting ready to show you by way of Holy Spirit what's transpiring in this atmosphere so that you can know how to properly equip yourself and you can know how to fight back. <clears throat> I refuse to let this happen. Every time you think about what the enemy is trying to bring your way to impede your progress, I want you to simply type in, I refuse to let this happen. I'm going to be reading quite a bit of word on today. <clears throat> We're going to be reading quite a bit of word on today. And so I want you to get your paper Bible if you have one. I'm going to put the word on the screen. And when God releases me to come on the screen, I'm going to come on the screen. I refuse to let this happen. Father, show me how to fight. Father, show me how to use my words as weapons against satanic attack. I refuse to let this happen. First Timothy 2. One through four. Let's get let's 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 get into the word. <clears throat> I exhort you, therefore, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings 
and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. The word of the Lord says that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, not some, but all. We are in a season where God is instructing us, for those of you all who have the mandate, who have the mantle and the assignment, we are in a season where God is calling us to be about his business. I said this yesterday with our covenant partners, and I feel led of the Lord to <clears throat> repeat this because this was a revelation that God gave me two days ago. He said that oftentimes people will use the term, stay out of my business. But what if I told you in this season that God has purposefully assigned people to be in your business? Write this down. Uh, I think I shared it on yesterday, but write this down. When you use the term mind, minding your business, you are dealing with matters of the flesh. Jesus did not say that I'm about my business. Jesus said that I be about <clears throat> my father's business. So when you are minding the business of the father, you are dealing with spiritual matters. There are many times you will experience natural and fleshly carnality and you'll, you'll experience natural and fleshly calamities as well when you're dealing with minding your own business. But oftentimes God will send people down your pathway that will be about his business that will intercept certain things that's coming to bring you calamity. Okay, let me go ahead and put it this way. There's certain battles that God will give people the grace and the mantle to fight in the spirit so that you don't have to deal with it in the natural. The Bible says that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made known for all men. Father, we thank you right now for this message. Father, I thank you right now for strengthening my vocal cords. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for giving us strength for this battle. Every intercessor, every person that is praying in the spirit, even now, I hear your prayers. I feel your prayers. Father, I thank you right now that you are strengthening, strengthening their vocal cords. Father, I thank you that you are strengthening their minds. I pray right now, Lord God, for every household that is represented. I pray right now for every ministry that is represented. I pray for every leader globally that is here by way of this means of communication, this digital platform that you've allowed us to be able to infiltrate so that we can spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all throughout the world. Father, I thank you for every leader that is here. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, for giving them supernatural strength to be able to intercede, to pray, to give thanks and to supplicate for every person that's connected to their life. Hmm. Second Timothy three and seven. Erevanto rabanshi de deban sukur rabanta. Second Timothy chapter three. Hmm. Let's go back to verse four. First Timothy two. Let's camp out at verse four. It says, who will, all, who will that all men be saved and coming into the knowledge of truth. But this is where we are in the season, y'all. We are in 2 Timothy 3 and 7, that there are people that are ever learning and they're never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. My assignment this, t this morning, my assignment today, whether you're watching this live or by replay, my assignment is to show you how to unlock the power of the prayers that have yet to be answered in your life. What you make happen for other people, God is going to make happen for you. And while you may feel as if you are the only one that's going through what you're going through, 
I want you to hear me by the Spirit of the Most High God. You are not by yourself. There are oftentimes God would allow you to experience things first so that you can know how to pray for people so that they will not go through it later. You are equipped for the fight. The enemy cannot take you out because if the enemy could have taken you out, he would have taken you out by now. But listen to me and hear me by the spirit of the most high God. He desires to sift you as wheat. But God is sending powerful people to pray for you and to intercede for you in this season. I refuse to let this happen. I refuse to let this happen. When God begins to start giving you visions of people, when God begins to start showing you people that you're connected to and you begin to start seeing faces and you begin to start hearing testimonies and you begin to start hearing stories, it is not the time for you to camp out and consider what you're going through. It is the time for you to intercede so that there be others that are intercede for you. The same measure that you meet, the Bible did not say what we ought to give. And some of us are in a season where God is requiring us to give prayer and give our attention and give our time to make sure that we are standing in the gap and interceding for others. You are equipped for the fight. I know this by way of Holy Spirit that many of you all are in a space where you have been saying, God, when are you going to answer my prayer? And I'm here as a messenger of the Most High God to let you know that God is going to answer your prayer when you get on your mantle and when you get on your watch and start and begin when you start praying for other people. Hmm. I refuse to let this happen. Who has God put on your mind that you've yet to pray for? What has God put in your heart that you've yet to pray out? I say this all the time. It is not God's job to birth anything out of your life. God's job is to impregnate you. Your assignment is to give birth to it. God gives life, man gives birth. There's a major difference. Mary still had to go through the pregnancy. She still had to go through the pain. And some of you all are adopting what you consider other people's problems, but other people's problems is God's business. And if you are about your biz your father's business, he said that I will that all men be saved, including your enemies. Okay. What if I told you that God specifically put you on the job because you are the one that's equipped to pray for the people that despitefully use you? It's his will that all men be saved, including your enemies. Hmm. I'm going to give you book on this. But I want to share this with you that he says, I exhort, therefore, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority. That includes your supervisor, your boss, whatever you want to call it, your pastor, your leader, your president, whether you voted for him or not, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For it is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of truth. But the problem is there are people ever learning and they are never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Let me go ahead and say this, man. There's certain we are in a season now where God is supernaturally expediting our spirit man. Listen to me. There's some of you all that are coming into the knowledge of the truth and you're able to unlock mysteries that these witches and these warlocks have been practicing for a minute. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and say it this way. Whenever God gives and releases a grace or a gift, he's not going to take it back. Satan has the same gifts that he had when he was in heaven, before he got cast down. He had the same gifts that he had then. 
So if you are of young age and you were introduced to witchcraft and you were introduced to divination and or if you were in corporate and you were used to seeing things from a different vantage point, then when you come into the knowledge of the truth, that's not going to go away. What God put in you the first time, he ain't taking it away. Okay. I hope this is helping somebody. I don't even know how I got there, but I, I hope that helped. I'm picking up much in the spirit right now. But we're in a season right now where God is giving some of you all the grace to be able to understand his mysteries, to understand his principles. And it's going to seem strange to people that don't know him. One of the, the, the first, write this down. If I am to experience all of who God is, it's going to come first through intimacy. Intimacy requires relationship. If I'm going to experience the power of God in my life, it is going to come through his mysteries. And some of us, we are learning the ways of men, but we're not learning the principles and the laws of God. Okay. God ain't taking his gifts back. Satan still uses music. He still uses music to woo people. He uses that same frequency. The Bible says pipes were in his body. When he moved, there was music. He uses the same proposition that he gave Jesus. He uses the same proposition to woo and wow people. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. What God put in you, he put in you for a reason. He ain't taking it back. Mm. I don't know how I got here. Let me get back to what I'm, I'm, I'm purposed to teach on today. If you haven't shared this, share this. We're in a season right now of not just natural warfare, but we are in a season of spiritual warfare. We are in a season of spiritual warfare. <clears throat> yeah, I'm gonna say this. I wanna talk to at least 50 of y'all. Before you tithe anybody to anybody's ministry, including this one, tithe your gift back. Give God what he gave you. Give it back to him. Don't allow the world to profit more off of your gift that God gave you than the kingdom will. Give God your gift back. Give it back to him. Return it to him. Tie your gift. I remember when I was working uh, with other ministries and I was serving under other leaders. I made it up in my mind. I made it up in my mind that I would not go and work 40 hours for man <laughs> and I couldn't give God an hour or two that didn't make sense to me I remember there was a time we were working this major conference and I was a head usher of a ministry at that particular time ministry had like 5,000 plus people and God gave me this revelation years ago he said if you can work 40 hours for man what's an hour and a half for me plus I'm going to compensate you more than they could ever pay you somebody needed to hear that I love when God takes these little side journeys give God your gift back mm. tithe your gift Okay. Yeah, I'm probably the only preacher you'll ever hear say this. Before you give somebody else your money, 
you give God, give God what he gave you, which is your gift, because it's your gift that is enabling you to get resources. Okay. I hope that helped. Prophetic scribes, if God is releasing something through you, go ahead and release. I, I, I sense a, I sense a, a strong wind of power that is rushing through this platform. Ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of truth. We didn't been to everybody's conference. We didn't got everybody's strategies, but we lack the wisdom of God. God has us in a season where we are purposefully being positioned. Hear me. God has us in a season where we are purposefully being positioned to intercede and stand in the gap for people, for purpose sake, for kingdom sake. He has us purposefully and peculiarly being put in a position where he is building our inner man up so that we can think less about ourselves and more about the kingdom mission that he has put on the inside of us. Write this down. There is a law called the law of love, right? The law of love. The law of love is literally the heartbeat of what we consider intercession, right? The law of love says, I'm thinking more than just about myself, right? It's, it's not just about me. The law of love. There, there, there are, there have been times when I was eating something and my little one, I'm, I'm down to almost like my last piece of it, right? Or it may be my last piece of something that I absolutely love. And God never fails to do this by way of example, because he's always puts me in a season and put me in a position where I have to make sacrifices. And my little ones would always come and they were like, dad, could I have this? And because I love them, I will give them my last. Because I love them, I will always either give them my last or I will buy in twos. This is a word of the Lord for somebody that just got married. Whenever you go and buy something, always buy in twos. Okay. All right. The law of love is a law that basically says what I am doing right now, I'm doing because I refuse to be selfish. You cannot stand in the gap for somebody else and be full of self. You cannot be married and be full of self. You cannot be a business owner and be full of self. I want everybody, I want you to write this down. Never forget this. Everything you make happen for somebody else, God is going to make happen for you. Everything I make happen for somebody else, God is going to make happen for me. Make it personal. Everything I make happen for somebody else, God is going to make happen for me. Now, I'm saying what I'm getting ready to say for teaching purposes only. I'm not asking anybody to sow anything, but this is for teaching purposes only. A couple of days ago, maybe three, four days ago, my aunt, I had my only living aunt. She received an award, well, an award, world's best librarian. She's a librarian. Holy Spirit had impressed in my spirit to just be a blessing to her for no reason at all. I simply sent her $50, right? Holy Spirit says, send her $50. He says, I want you to begin to start practicing my principles. So I just sent her a little happy, a little $50 happy. Less than an hour after that transpired, somebody randomly sent it back to me. God says, I want you to teaching purposes only, teaching purposes only. God said, I want you to release a thousand. And God randomly had somebody to release a thousand. Why am I sharing this? The Bible says that the same measure 
that you meet. In other words, the same way or whatever you release is going to come right back. Mm. Who are you praying for? I said all that to say, who are you praying for? I said all that to say, who are you blessing? I, I said all that to say, who are you helping? This is the law of love. We just said, we just know for God so loved the world that he gave. Love requires you giving up something. Hmm. The same measure. The same measure. The same measure. Let's go to Genesis chapter 18. Let me give you Bible. And then the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? We'll never in the dark. And before this happened, listen to me, before this happened, if you read up a little further, the Bible says the Lord appeared unto Abraham and that Abraham looked. And after Abraham looked, three men showed up. Okay. <laughs> three men showed up. Now, this is before we get to this particular text. This is the prolegomenia. It's the text before the text. This is how we arrive right here. So God sends three men. He sends three men to Abram. He shows up. The Bible says that the Lord appeared. And then when Abraham looked, he saw three men. Then he knelt down. He recognized what was on these men. He says, let me give you something to eat right? Come and sit up under this tree and get some shade. Let me sow into your life. You're not going to pass my way. You're not going to pass by me and I not bless you because I recognize what's on you. There's certain people that God will put in your life and you will be able to see the glow. You'll be able to see the grace that's on their life. You won't be able to allow that person and those people to be able to leave your presence without you being a blessing to them. I pray to God that he strengthens your perception in this season. I pray to God that he strengthens your perception in this season, that you will perceive just like the Shulamite woman, when somebody that's full of grace, somebody that has what you need and need what you have comes in your, your presence. I pray to God that you will perceive who's in your presence. Mm. I feel glory today. I pray to God that you will perceive. And so these three men come and Abraham feeds them. He takes care of them. And after he, listen to me, after he, after he feeds them, after he sows a seed in their life, Lord, I hope y'all going to, somebody put this into the screen, gifts activate gifts. Gifts activate gifts. I'm going to pull this up. Genesis 18. Genesis chapter 18. Lord, Ravanza did it, Evanto. Oh, Ravanto, Ravanza. Father, thank you for this jaywalk. Lord, Ravanza, thank you for this detour. Three visitors. Hmm. So no raban sondo ravanta. La raban sondo rababata. Genesis 18. I'm going to read this because I want to take my time and read this. Everything you make happen for someone else, God is going to make happen for you. This sounds familiar because this is the same thing that happened to the Shulamite woman. She perceived that the man of God came, so she built a chamber on it. She built a chamber on the side of her house. She built a guest house for the man of God. She, she, she took care of the man of God. Genesis 18 and verse one, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of the door in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, my Lord, I have found, if I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. Perceive who's in your presence. 
I pray thee from thy servant, let a little water, I pray you be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. I will fetch a morsel of bread. I'm going to feed you, man of God. I'm going to sow something into your life. And comfort ye your hearts after that you passed on. For therefore you come to your servant. And they said, so, so do. In other words, there are people that God is allowing you to cross paths with. And your soil is just as important as their seed. I don't even know how we getting here, but for those of you all who have issues with allowing people to help you, I'm here as a messenger of the most high God to let you know that you need to allow the help that you've been praying for to help you. Let your help help you. I will let my help help me. I will let my help help me. I want you to catch the principle out of this. And Abraham, hmm, and Abraham, verse 6, and Abraham, we're in Genesis 18 and verse 6, and Abraham hastened into the tent and to Sarah and said, make ready the three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man and he hastened to dress it and he took butter and milk and a calf which he had dressed and he set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they ate. He fed what was about to feed him. And then they said unto him, where is Sarah, your wife? Where is your multiplier? Hmm. And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, Listen to me. Gifts activate gifts. Write this down. Gifts activate gifts. I'm, I'm trying to help y'all today. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help all 112 of y'all today. More is on the way. 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 I see this channel multiplying. 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 I see everything on this particular platform multiplying. I'm looking at your faces right now. I'm seeing your names right now. And I'm seeing this channel multiply. When I say channel, I'm talking about everybody that is watching me right now. Whether you're on the screen or whether you're getting ready to go to your ministry, I'm seeing God getting ready to multiply your life. Gifts activate gifts. Here we see Abram, Abraham being a blessing to these three men that's coming. And verse 10, hmm, he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, will have a son. When he began to start feeding the messengers that were coming, they got a word. Gifts activate gifts. It wasn't until he released something into their life that they turned around and released something right back into his. Okay. More is on the way. And Abram, now Abram and Sarah were old and stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of wisdom. And therefore Sarah laughed within herself. <laughs> God and told you you was going to start the business and he didn't told you what you was going to do and you laughing within yourself not knowing that your laugh, your inner laugh is real loud in the spirit not knowing that that inner laugh, listen to me is creating echoes and waves in the spirit and the Lord said unto Abraham Where, why, why did Sarah laugh? You having these inner thoughts and you're not thinking that the men and women of God that's around you can't pick them up. Hmm. That's a characteristic of someone who is endowed with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus knew their thoughts. 
Okay. Let me get back to verse 17. And then the Lord said, this is how we got here. Then the Lord said, shall I hide Abraham from Abraham what I'm about to do? Now, Abraham, these men left Abraham's presence and they went into Sodom and Gomorrah. They went into a space where Abraham knew was no good. And so Abraham said, you didn't gave me a word. I fed you. You've given me a word. And I need to make sure that you're well taken care of. This whole time, why Abram was so blessed is that he never was in a position of self. He was able and he was willing to be able to release what he had in the natural. And when they left his presence, he released what he had in the spirit, which was intercession. I hope this is helping somebody on today, man. And he said, Abram would surely become a great and powerful nation and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. This word from God himself didn't come until he sold something into the life of who God sent. First, God sent the seed. Then he sent the vision. I hope somebody catching this. God sent the seed first. He told, he told him, your wife going to get pregnant. And when your wife get pregnant, this is what I'm going to do out of the one that's going to come out of your wife. This is what I'm going to do through you. I'm going to make you a great and powerful nation. And all nations of the earth is going to be blessed through you, Abraham. For I've chosen him and he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right. And just so that the Lord will bring out for Abraham what he has promised him. God going to bring it out. Genesis 18, 20 through 21. We're going to be reading quite a bit this morning. And then the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin is so grievous. Verse 21, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. God changes this conversation with him being a great nation to start talking to him about a particular city. And then the men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. And then Abraham approached him and said, will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? In other words, are you going to allow these righteous men that just came before me to be sweeped, swept away from the people with the people that I know ain't no good? God, are you going to allow your children, the ones that just left the temple, the one that just left this Sunday morning encounter to go into the workplace, go back to their place of employment and be swept away with the wicked men that they are working with. What if there are 50 righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of 50 righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked. He's talking to God, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, Lord. Would not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, Sodom, I will spare the whole place for for their sake. And Abraham began to negotiate. Abraham says, he spoke up again. Now I've been so bold to speak to the Lord, though I'm nothing but dust and ashes. What if the number of the righteous is five less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Genesis 18, 30 and 31. And then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 be found there? He answered, I would not do it if I find 30 30 there. And Abraham said, now that I've been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if 
only 20 can be found there. He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. In Genesis 18, 32 and 33, he says, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak again. What if only 10 can be found there? And he answered, for the sake of 10, I would not destroy it. And when the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and returned home. And Abraham returned home. Who's waiting on you to speak up for them? I want to ask you this question. Who's waiting on you to speak up for them? A couple of days ago, I was led out of the Lord to give my testimony, a part of it rather. <laughs> I don't think social media can handle all of what I've been through. But I remembered the time when I was in positions of authority and I would be sitting before wicked men and I would see what they would try to do to people that were under my leadership and I spoke out against it and every time I spoke out against it two things there was two things occurred one I lost my position and two they kept the people in the same position the same people that they were complaining about the same people that they were choosing to misuse they kept them in position and put me out of position some of you all have been in similar situations where God has called you to intercede and you were the one that was attacked. You were the one that was put out. Hear me and hear me very carefully. God is strengthening you in this season. And this is why he's pulling many of you all off of those assignments and he's giving you a mandate to establish what he has called you to establish in this season because nobody can put you out when God has called you up. Okay. I refuse to let this happen. They can't fire you this time. They can't let you go this time because you be about your father's business. They have no jurisdiction over your movements in this season. They can't manipulate you and tell you that they're not going to give you hours and they're not going to allow you to be promoted. They don't have that to dangle over your head in this season. Mm. John chapter 17. I revealed you to those whom you gave me out of this world. This is Jesus speaking. We're talking about the power of refusing to let certain things happen. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything that you've given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me. This is what Jesus, Jesus is having a conversation with the Father. He says, I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. Father, I thank you right now for every person that is here that believes that you have sent me. This is a prayer point for some of you all to just go ahead and write down when God puts you in the presence of people that honor your word, honor your grace. Don't take people for granted. Thank God that people receive you. Thank God. Be grateful. Stay in a posture of humility that people will receive the words that God is giving you to relate to them. Jesus said they knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. This is my heart posture, my heart's posture. If you ever want to know my heart's posture, this is it right here. John 17, 6 through 9. This is my heart's posture concerning God's people. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but I pray for those you've given me for they are yours. 
El evanso corra avanzata. Mar revenge de devanso torra avanzo torra avanse de devanta. La avanzo to. For the past three days, I've been hearing. I, I heard. I just saw it. It's almost like a a switch, a light switch went off. Like a light switch went off. Like a flickering. In the next couple of days, <laughs> don't ignore the flickering. I hear the Holy Spirit say, in the next couple of days, don't ignore the flickering. There's going to be flashes of light, flashes of light, meaning that there's going to be a space where many of you all are going to be walking and you're going to begin to start seeing light on people. These people that you begin to start seeing the light on, God is going to highlight them to show you that they are acquaintances. These acquaintances will be assigned and sent by God to help you with kingdom acquisition. These acquaintances will be sent by God to help you to acquire the knowledge that you need for the next season of your life. Don't ignore the acquaintances. Mm. Don't ignore the flickering. I just heard this by way of Holy Ghost. Don't ignore the acquaintances. Don't ignore the flickering. How many of you all remember a couple of months ago, it may have been last month, and I shared with you all how you're going to go into certain spaces and systems are going to shut down. It happened to me like four or five times. You're going to get to the cash register and, shift, and systems are going to begin to start shutting down. I went to the store a couple of days ago. I'm working on something. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, sharing this for a reason. I went to the store a couple of days ago, and right after I made my purchase, everything in the grocery store, it was about 6.30 in the morning, everything in the grocery store, all of the systems shut down. And God began to start reminding me how he will allow certain things to happen while nobody else is around so that we can see what's happening in the natural so that we can prophetically decree it so that it won't happen in the spirit. Listen to me. Listen to me. God will allow us to see things in the natural so that we can prophetically decree it and declare it so that we can release the warning in time and before time so that you won't be behind time. What if I told you that there are times when God will release a prophetic word over your life or you may hear a prophetic word and you're believing for that word to happen. You believe the word of the prophet and the word comes and said that calamity is getting ready to come to the earth. Prepare. Systems are getting ready to shut down. Prepare. What if I told you that it could be that some things don't happen because an intercessor was present. What if I told you that certain things won't happen because you interceded? What if I told you certain things were en route to be destroyed, but God sent an intercessor? Hmm. I want you to, there are three books in the Word of God I want you to study out because this is where you're going to find a lot of mysteries. Peter, James, and John. Okay. If this is helping you, I need you to type in a 122. I want to make sure I'm not talking to myself. I feel glory. Heather Maxwell, I hear the Lord saying to you right now, fight it in prayer. I don't know what that means, but I just heard the Holy Spirit tell me to tell you to fight it in prayer. I need every intercessor. If something is getting on your nerves, if something is bothering you in this season, God has literally, you may not be assigned 
the office of an intercessor or you may not have that position, but you may have the grace in this season to stand in the gap. Stutter, P, study Peter, James, and John. All right. So John James gets beheaded, right? Think it's James. One of them gets beheaded, and now they're coming for Peter. Let's go there. Acts 12, 1 and 3. James. Now, after that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And he saw that it pleased the Jews. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Oh, my God. He proceeded further to take Peter also. Let's go to Luke twenty-two thirty-one. 31. These are the words of Jesus. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I pray for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Simon, Simon, Satan desired to sift you. Marilyn, Janie, Audrey, Julia, Kofi, Prophetess Patrice, Pam Harris, Heather, John Shreddick, Jennifer Jones, Yuri, Yada, Aquita, Lakeisha. The enemy desires to sift you, but I pray for you that your faith fails you not. And when you've turned back, strengthen your brothers. So he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword because he saw it pleased the Jews. And he proceeded further to take Peter also. Whenever Jesus speaks a word, know that it's going to manifest. Jesus was having this conversation with Peter and he said he desires to sift you and your brothers. Who are your brothers? James and John. Peter, James, and John, they were always with him. He says, strengthen your brothers. And these were the days of the unleavened bread. In other words, this is the time of Passover, which we are vastly fast approaching. Acts 12, 4 through 5. And when he, when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. For the people that say Easter ain't in the word of God, here you go. This is KJV, by the way. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. This is why you hear me say that prayer knows no distance. Whenever God puts it on the heart of people to intercede for you, debt has to stop. Listen to me. Whatever was coming for you, whatever was, com was coming to try to destroy you, it has to stop. Mm. Don't tell me your prayers can't put Satan at bay. The people, Peter was in prison and the people within the body were in a particular place praying. And prayer releases this frequency that breaks chains. Prayer releases this sound that you can hear hmm, with your natural ear. But prayer produces this sound to break things off of your life in the spirit. <laughs> <sighs> but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. I refuse to let this happen. 
those of you all the enemy is trying to lock up in this season. He's trying to play games with your mind. He's trying to play games with your purpose. He's trying to play games with your resources. I refuse to let this happen. I'm seeing all of these things manifest in the realm of the spirit and how the enemy is desiring to stop your progress, but I refuse to let this happen. I refuse to let this happen. I refuse to let this happen. I refuse. May every stronghold that the enemy is trying to suppress you with, may every stronghold that the enemy is trying to destroy you with, I command it to break right now in the name of Jesus. I command it to break off of your life. I command the thoughts of you are not you are not worthy to break off of your life. I command every lock that is trying to suppress and trying to suffocate your resources in this season. I command those locks to break off of your life. I refuse to let this happen. Every person that is watching me right now, if your marriage is going through probably one, you consider one of the worst seasons of your marital life, I command everything that the enemy is trying to use to destroy your union, I command it to break right now in the name of Jesus. I refuse to let this happen. For those of you all who feel like giving up, you feel like you are not even worth living, I command those thoughts to break off of your life right now. Intercessors, stand in the gap. For those of you all who feel as if you don't have anything that you can do more for your teenagers, I pray that God will send people down their pathway that will they will listen to and receive them wholeheartedly that will speak the pulse of heaven in your heart so that your children can be saved. I refuse to let this happen. I'm going to say this. You too big of a giver to be broke. I don't know who this is for, but this is why I'm praying that these things break off of your life. You too big of a giver to be broke. You got too much love to be so hateful. Hmm. You have too much peace in you to be so worried. It ain't bone to break. I command it to break right now in the name of Jesus. La da bon so good ravanta. La ravanzo do ravanto ravanzo to ravanzo to. Write this down. Whenever you have a mandate. God will make sure that he sends you around people with mantles. Okay. The mandate requires that I'm in the presence of those with mantles. <sighs> Do you not know? How many of you all know that Jesus had to encounter at his birth those with mantles so that he can birth out certain things in the natural. It is a process. Some of you all are at the infancy stage of God doing what he's going to do in your life. You've moved when God told you to move. You're doing everything the right way. And it seems as if there is a bounty on your head. And about 40 days after Jesus' birth, around between that 30 and 40 days after Jesus was born, there was a, a law that says that he had to go back and get consecrated. And there were two turtle doves that had to be sacrifices. With the consecration comes a sacrifice. Listen to me. In Luke 22, he has an encounter. He has an encounter with two older individuals that have mantles one of the encounters that he has in Luke 22 he has an encounter with a prophet named Simeon and Simeon receives a word of the Lord that says he would not he would not die until he comes and he's able to see the Messiah for himself I say this to you prophetically there's some of you all, God will not allow you to be able to see death until you see Jesus. 
You're going to see him manifest in all areas of your life. I hope y'all listening to me on today. And Simeon, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, even when Jesus was an infant, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came upon him and he revealed unto him. I pray to God that not only will the Holy Spirit be in you, but he'll be upon you. This is why you need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit on the inside of you changes you. Holy Spirit upon you is for the work of the ministry. It's for other people. I didn't give me my gift. This is why you hear me say all the time, my gift is free, my time ain't. Mm. I hope this is helping, man. In Luke 22, he encounters this older gentleman named Simeon. And Simeon prayed for him. Somebody say prayer. Simeon interceded for Jesus. He was a baby. He couldn't fend for himself. And there was this mantle of prayer that was released to Jesus through this prophet. Mm. There will be natural manifestations. I said this on yesterday. I think this bears repeating. The next 90 days are going to be days of results. The next 90 days are going to be days of results. Because there are things that your results can preach better than your words can. Oh my God in heaven. There is a dimension in the spirit that cannot be preached by men, can't be preached by your words. It'll only be preached by results. The days of results. Father, let my results speak. Father, let my results speak. I made it up in my mind physically that I would, t I would not have to tell no man that I'm disciplined. You're going to look at me and see that I'm disciplined. <laughs> Abraham, didn't, these men did not have to tell Abraham who they were. He looked at them and he saw who they were. He saw what was on them and he began to start sowing into what he saw. Listen to me, start sowing into what you see. But this is a word of the Lord for somebody right now. What you make happen for somebody else, God's going to make happen for you. Father, let my results speak for me. And Jesus has an encounter in Luke 22. He has an encounter with the prophetess by the name of Anna. The Bible says, huh, Bible gives two numbers. It gives the number seven and it gives the number eight and four. There's certain things that God wants to complete in your life so that you can start the new beginning so that God can put the signature on your life. 784, 784, 784. The Bible says, and she was 84 years old. God doesn't waste words. God don't waste moments even when we do. The Bible says that she was in the temple. Said The Bible says she never left the temple. The Bible says that she was in the temple day and night, fasting and praying. And this mantle was released into Jesus. He had intercessors. Mm. 
Some of you all need to go and have conversations with your older aunts and your grandmothers, your mamas, because there are things that they cannot accomplish in their lifetime that God is equipping you to accomplish in yours. Hallelujah. I'm done. I pray that this was a blessing to those of you all who are here on today. I pray that you are able to receive what the Holy Spirit has released on today. I'm thinking now, my mind is going into a space where what if James had intercessors? Could it be that the intercessors showed up too late and they realized that they were not on their post? So we lost one, but we won't lose another one. We lost James, but we can't lose you, Peter. Mm. We were not on our watch. We were not praying diligently like we needed to pray. We lost you, James, but we won't lose you, Peter. I ain't taking no more L's in this season. This is a declaration of faith that some of you all need to adopt. I'm not taking any more L's in this season. I'm not taking any more L's. I'm not taking any more L's. I've had young men, young women that have been under our leadership gone. We ain't taking no more L's. Find one day, gone the next. We're not taking no more L's in this season. We ain't taking no more L's in this season. I'm speaking collectively to our community, to our family. We ain't taking no more L's in this season. I ain't taking no more L's. We ain't taking no more L's in this season. I refuse to let this happen. Your business won't fail. We strong on the intercession in this season. We pray that you will have a peaceable and quiet life. Whether you are a king, a priest, a mother, a brother, a father, no matter where you fit on the spectrum. Our assignment is to pray for all men that all men be saved. We ain't taking no more L's in this season, Belinda Wallace. See a Kelker, we ain't taking no more L's in this season. We ain't taking no more L's. Katrina, we ain't taking no more L's. Prophetess Tina, Yada, we ain't taking no more L's. If you see something, say something. Ezekiel 33. My wife can tell you this happened two days ago. Two days ago. I want to say this publicly. Y'all need to get some of these. Y'all see this? Y'all need to get these. Y'all see that? These are earplugs. Custom molded earplugs. There's another set. You need to get these earplugs. You see this? Either one. These are the ones that I have. Screenshot that. These are the ones that I have. I have both and. One is 31 decibel. The other one covers 27 decibels. Feel led of the Lord to just show you that. God used the prophetic voice that we respect to release a word concerning protecting your eardrums from frequencies. We echo what heaven was saying through her to everyone that was connected to our community. Two days ago, we're sitting in our house and we yet to identify what this was or what this is. But there was a sound that came out of nowhere in our home that sounded like a sounded like an alarm. We tried to pinpoint it. It happened every bit of maybe 25 seconds. It was so loud that it came out of nowhere. We tried to identify it. 
we had no device that was making that sound. Listen to me. The enemy is trying to destroy your vision through venom and vices. I hope y'all listening to me all today. He's using venom and vices and particularly devices. So the word of the Lord says we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. Somebody find that scripture. We ain't taking no more L's. And so when I heard that noise, God reminded me to remind those of you all who are connected and those of you all who have an ear to hear, protect yourself from the frequencies that's getting ready to hit this land because they coming. I ain't taking no more L's. Enough is enough. So we heavy on the intercession. We heavy on the prayer. We getting back to the fundamentals. Faith and prayer. We gonna get a heavy dose of faith and prayer and a whole lot of giving. Why are we giving? Because we have to give our gift back to God so that God can produce in our lives what we desire to see in our lives. For God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus prayed for Peter. He prayed for his disciples. Enough is enough. Lady Bantu Ravanta. Lady Bansungu Ravanta. I shared this with those of you all a um, couple of weeks ago. I'm done. But I shared this with those of you all a couple of weeks ago that during this month, that land is going to come into your hand. And we receive a numerous amount of testimonies about people acquiring property. I had a particular lady uh, that's connected to the ministry. I don't know if she's watching or not. She may be at her ministry, but we saw her out. We were out randomly and I had a green cloth. How many of you all remember God told me to have that green cloth and keep the green cloth inside of your wallet, inside of your, your, your wallets and, and where you carry your money. But I had the green cloth. And the Holy Spirit said, give the green cloth to her. And so uh, God began to show me the wealth, grace, and mantle that was on her life. And so I asked her a simple question. I said, uh, uh, woman of excellence, uh, how much cash do you have on hand? And the woman of excellence began to say, oh, about um, 300,000. She was like, when you gave me the cloth, two days after that, we received a message on property in the mountains. A couple of days after that, $45,000 came. A couple of days after that, $11,000 came. What if I told you, listen to me by way of the Holy Spirit, what if I told you that somebody that's around you is waiting on you to release your grace in their life so that they can be multiplied? Mm. Okay. I hope y'all listening to me. God has some of you all in a season where you're releasing graces and it's going to, it's going to appear like what it is. The reason God have you in a season of releasing graces, because listen to me, <laughs> what comes out of your soil is supposed to produce more than you do. Oh my God. Your children are supposed to be better than you. Your mentees are supposed to be better than you. Those who sit under your leadership are supposed to be more advanced than you. I hope y'all catching this, man. So if you are in leadership and you don't want the people around you to do better than you, you don't need to be in leadership. It's designed to be that way. Okay. I'm done. I hope this has helped. It's designed to be that way. Your children are going to be better. You can't be jealous of your children. You can't be jealous of those you pastor. You can't be jealous of those you lead. You need to be their biggest cheerleader. 
Okay. You know what blesses me? To see y'all blessed. When I hear the testimonies, it blesses me to see you blessed. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, land was coming into your hand. We, had a, we have a daughter in the faith. One of our spiritual daughters, we conversed with her on two separate occasions. And God told us to resume the conversation. She may be on here now. And God gave me some prophetic instructions to give her. I gave her the prophetic instructions. She didn't release any resources, but she released, what she released was a seed of obedience because she did what God instructed me to relate to her to do. Listen to me. This is, I'm, I'm sharing this as a testimony. Some of you all may not have any resources to release, but you have obedience. We didn't even ask for any resources. Some in this season, some of you all may not have anything tangible to release, but you will need to release your faith. Some of you all just need to release your obedience. A couple of days after the conversation, she comes back and she says, we, I've been approved for the loan. Prior to, they were giving her a hard time. But when God sends you in assessors, this is not to brag on us, but this is just to teach a lesson. That when God sends you intercessors, one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. Land is coming into your hands. Now all she got to do is pick out the house. Because she pre-approved. If you want to connect with this ministry, listen, I want you to go to believebigagain.com. If you want to be a part of our text message community where you receive information, I want you to go to 833-407-2517. I'm so happy about what God is doing in y'all life. I'm so excited about what God is doing in y'all life. I want you to go to believebigagain.com if you want to connect with us. You don't have a leader. You, don't, you want to connect. Uh, with this global mandate that God has instructed us to do. Listen, we're from L.A. to the U.K. And we're just honored to be able to serve God in this capacity. You can use any of these means to be able to release into the kingdom. For those of you all who are new to our community, I want you to type in, if this is your first time here at Mama Force, I want you to type in the 88. 88 is the number connected to our ministry. God uses patterns. He uses signs. He uses principles. He uses prophecy. If this is your first time here, first time here, my voice, I want you to type an 88 in the screen. Hallelujah. What we teach here and what we believe here, according to revelation, the mystery of the kingdom, we teach and we believe that tithing is the luxury tax of the kingdom. Just like taxes are releasing the natural to take care of natural governmental officials, the tithe is released in the realm of the spirit to take care of the matters of the things of the spirit so that we can be a blessing to God's people. We believe and we teach that tithing is the luxury tax of the kingdom. We believe and we teach by revelation that offerings is for your provision, is for your daily bread. And this is why Abraham was blessed. Gifts activate gifts. We teach and we believe that sowing is for impartation. What's on your life comes on my life. That's what we believe. If you sow love, you're going to get love back. If you sow patience, you're going to get patience back. If you sow money, you're going to get money back. If you want tomatoes, plant tomatoes. If you want resources, plant resources. And then there are oftentimes God will give you a word to release to somebody and it'll come back in the form of resources. It'll come back in the form of information. God may instruct you to release uh, a seed of some sort, whatever he purposed in your heart to release. And you may be believing God for a million dollars worth of information. And somebody can come and tell you, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Or they can give you divine wisdom. And that divine wisdom can be worth thousands of dollars. 
And we believe and we teach that giving is for multiplication. According to Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. It is impossible for you to be a blessing to God and God not bless you. We saw that in Genesis 18. It is impossible, listen to me, for you to be a blessing to God and God, God not bless you. It is impossible for you to be a blessing to God, be a blessing to God's men and women or whoever God chooses to instruct you to be a blessing to and God not bless you. Hallelujah. Prophet is Tina. I don't know if you have anything to release this morning. Prophet is Patrice. I don't know if you have anything to release this morning. But I want you all to obey God concerning what's in this atmosphere. Prophet is Madra. If God has given you something, Belinda, perhaps you may have already released it. Um, Belinda, if God has given you something uh, poetically to release into this atmosphere, I want to give you all the opportunity to release that into this atmosphere. It. Father, I pray right now for every person under the sound of my voice as the prophetic scribes are manning their post, as the intercessors are getting the mandate to answer the call. Father, I thank you right now, Lord God, that we would not be bound by the systems of this world. We would not be restricted by the systems of man's culture, but we are kingdom. And as kingdom ambassadors, you have commanded us to go into all the world to teach and preach the gospel. And we are on assignment we are on an assignment. I refuse to let this happen. For those of you all who have a mandate and you know God has assigned you to stand in the gap, I simply need you to put that into the screen. If you know that God has placed a burden on your life to intercede, to stand in the gap on behalf of someone, I need you to put this into the screen. I refuse to let this happen. Jesus had intercessors. Jesus interceded. Peter had intercessors. Abraham was an intercessor. I refuse to let this happen. I say this unapologetically, and I'll say this again for those of you all who can hear me. When you mind your business, that becomes matters of the flesh. When you be about our Father's business, it becomes matters of the Spirit. Be very mindful in this season that we don't, that you don't, and we have to be careful that we don't speak prematurely and tell people, stay out of my business. What if God told them to get in your business? What if God instructed them to intercede for you, but you're looking at it through the realm of the flesh? What if God sent them as a messenger to help add faith, their faith to your faith? I refuse to let this happen. What if you only have the faith and the strength to lay before the Father in this season, but you don't have the strength to be able to get into his presence in the natural? Hmm. Listen to me. And so God will send intercessors to lift you up and put you through the roof. Some of you all, God is going to send you as a financial intercessor. Hmm. What if Joseph of Arimathea was not in position? In that, cult, in that culture, in that custom, they burn bodies. What if he wasn't in political, his political position? What if he didn't have favor 
with people in hot places? What if he didn't have the resources to be able to give Jesus a proper burial? What if? What if? Gifts activate gifts. Give God what he gave you right back to him. What if in Luke 22 that Simeon and Anna wasn't there? What if they didn't release the mantle of prayer and fasting and to Jesus in the natural? What if they didn't release it? I hear this by the Holy Spirit. Just like Satan is coming for you, your intercessors are coming to pull you out of his grip. Just like Satan is coming for you, your intercessors are coming for you too. They know where to locate you in the spirit. May not know where you are in the natural, but they're going to, know, they're going to be able to locate you, put a finger on you in the spirit. Hmm. Father, we thank you for all that we've seen and we've heard. I don't know if Prophetess has released something. Uh, I believe she did. Let me go and find it. I refuse to let this happen. I want to go ahead and say this. Not every intercessor God send you is going to be seen. And some of you all, God is going to call you to intercede and supplicate and pray for, pe pray for people from afar. There's some intercessors, I never see them, but I know they're present. Much like because I call them spiritual snipers. I never see them, but I know they're present. Because when I feel something off, there are times when I can feel stuff lift. Hmm. I posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest. You will not lose your mind in this season. This is a word of the Lord for somebody. I'm done when God is done. I don't think he's done yet right now. God is calling some of you all to open up your mouth in this season. What you make happen for other people God's going to make happen for you. Pray for somebody else's baby the next time you get into his presence. And the seed of prayer that you release for somebody else's babies, God is going to allow you to receive that seed right back, that seed of prayer, right back for your babies. There is a call to go up, up in your faith, your prayers, and your focus. Don't be drunk from the victory of past seasons. The new wine is here. Check your wine skins. Come on, woman of God. Check your wine skins. Check your wine skins. Check your wine skins. Your mouth is Satan's obituary. Check your wine skins. Mm. Father, we thank you for all that we've seen and heard on today. I need everybody to put this into the screen. If you can, I am the advantage. Maravanta. I am the advantage. I am the advantage. I am the advantage. I am the advantage. 
rabanta. I am the advantage. I am the advantage. I am the advantage. I hear this in the spirit. I am the advantage. God is releasing high level spiritual secrets to some of y'all. And there's some people that he's going to put you around and you won't be permitted to let them know what you know. He's putting you in position so that you can pray for them so that they can be protected. I am the advantage. When you can see through the realm of the spirit and when you God begin to reveal things for you to pray things out, you become the advantage. I am the advantage. Father, we thank you. We praise your name. I am the advantage. Hallelujah. Listen, I need y'all to join us uh, June 13th, um, 14th and 15th. June 14th and 15th. Um, I want to see you face to face. I want to see you in Jackson, Mississippi. I want you to go to WYSSUglobal.com. And I want you to register to be a part of the Encounter Relationship Resources and Rivers. Uh, We have these uh, gatherings as God leads in the regions that he is leading us to host them in. And there are people that God has assigned for us to bring in that's going to be a blessing to those who attend. And so I want to see you physically in the building, uh, June 14th and the 15th www.wyssuglobal.com go there and register know that I love you I pray that the favor of God rest upon you as you go throughout this day remember these three words acquisitions acquaintances and acquire there's kingdom acquisitions that's getting ready to be placed in your hand There are acquaintances. The Bible calls them strangers. There are acquaintances that God is going to allow you to have encounters with that's going to help you acquire access to the acquisitions. Listen to me, y'all. I hope y'all can receive this. Yes, I'm going to be in Meridian. My wife and I, we're going to be in Meridian, Mississippi on May 25th uh, as well for those who are... um, going to be there. I didn't know you were in Meridian, Joy. Uh, Look forward to seeing you on May the 25th. So we are excited. Uh, We love y'all. May the rest of your day be the best of your day. Wake your successful self up. Dominate your distractions. Believe big again and get your cake up so we can do kingdom. I pray that God releases uncommon favor over your life this week. We love y'all and I'll see y'all this week. Sometime as God leaves. Blessings and favor to you. Love y'all.